everyone. I haven't done a driving instructor video for a little bit. So this is what I've got planned for everyone today. Well, sort of. I've got the video planned and I know I'm gonna do it, but there's no prep of the route I'm gonna take or um, where I'm even finishing up. I know I've got another training session in an hour, so I've got plenty of time just to head somewhere and then get to my another next training session as and when. So it's irrelevant where we're going, I've got no idea. And this is really gonna be the key for today's training. It's all about planning. You may have seen the lessons that I've done with Erin recently. They've all been planning, planning, planning. And this planning forms the basis of honestly good driving. If you react, you've not seen it. So reactions always become dangerous. So what we're gonna try and do is just have a little look at what I do planning wise. So we're all set, let's get going. Even here, even when we are on my path. People would often just drive off. Um, there could be things around. There could be um, someone who's come out. I might have forgotten uh, a mobile phone. In fact, where is my phone? You know what? That's a good shout. Hang on a sec. Right. Take two. So I have now got my mobile phone, all right? It's safely stashed away. Um, it's not coming out anywhere near me while I'm driving, which is obviously the correct thing to do. So we will start again. As you can see, it's absolutely winged. Um, we've got nothing planned. Literally, I'm just gonna get driving and just start talking about stuff that I'm planning. So let's get going, part two. On the path, there could be someone coming out. My missus could have come out and said, Ash, you forgot your phone or you need to do this or you need to do that. So never get into that habit of thinking that it's definitely going to be clear because you know it's quiet around. It's the same sort of mindset as, the, as you should be having when you're in a car park. You do need to have a good check around absolutely everywhere and we're all good. Now I can't see around this fence to the right. So my neighbors, they could be coming out. So even now, I took a little bit of caution on looking around that corner. So it's planning, planning, planning all the time. I'm gonna make my way out of the estate. No signals required. I'm gonna talk a fair bit about signaling and planning. There's gonna be a, a fair link with those two subjects, so that's the key. So, looking far is the first thing. The further we can look, the sooner we're gonna see things and the easier it is to plan. When you can't see, that's often the key to risk being higher. I can't see far, so I've had to go slower until I could see further up the road. This scenario with the van, let me tell you what's going through my mind. I'm thinking, not that there's no one there, but someone could come round. So I'm at a speed and I'm ready to slow in case someone just comes from this right hand side. I'm trying to tuck it back to my side as much as I possibly can. And even there, people fly out of this junction on a daily and hourly basis because it's near their home. They, they very rarely have to stop there, but then they get into habits of being bad and it's these habits that we're going to try and talk about today driving shouldn't be habits it should be always planned and always driving to the conditions people get into habits of picking correct gears for corners or what they think is a correct gear for a corner but sometimes there could be other hazards that then make you have to slow down more and these are the things that I'm going to try and put across today so the plan, I've just seen a guy getting into his silver van. So there's no one around me, there's the silver van. And already I know if he doesn't turn, is he turning around? Because he stopped, looks that way. 
there is space to go up to still negotiate if a car came the other way. So I was fine trundling into this space. But notice how I've just taken my time. I'm positioning to show myself to everyone as well, which is really important. And I've given that guy plenty of space. So we don't really want to arrive into things not knowing what's happening or most importantly, not knowing that we could stop. Risk is something that I'm forever mentioning and I'm sure most of my viewers have heard me say that before. And even now, it's not what I can see, it's what I can't see to where I'm positioning my car. I'm giving myself loads of space. My right wheels, are, or sorry, my left wheels are virtually on the center line of the road here. So I'm virtually driving in lane two because it lessens the risk. Now I've seen the red car early and there is a little space a bit further up. So I'm just gonna position up a little further and come in. Now that's held holding back. The DPD van was key. And now, because the DPD van, has moved in, we're okay, thank you. Cheers, buddy. So it's not just the first vehicle that we're always looking at. I often say coming up to roundabouts and junctions, um, it's the last car, and it's the same with this, this situation as we're coming up to the junction. I'm not looking at the first one, I'm always looking at the final one. And it's that looking at the final one which pushes your eyes up into the future a bit more, rather than looking at the first one, which is generally the present. If you look at the first one, then that gap comes. You're then reacting to take that space. If you've already seen the final car, you know that space is on its way and you're able to anticipate and maybe even creep and move into that space. So it's really important. Planning here for the crossing. I'm always checking behind because behind always determines how we do things. But I look at crossings and look to see whether the button's been pressed and whether it's been activated, whether there's anyone there or anyone walking up to it. And if there's no one there at a standalone crossing, it shouldn't change. But don't forget that box where the button can be pressed could always be broke. Planning here, I'm thinking of other people turning left, so I'm positioning to the offside of my lane. I'm gonna go a little closer to the taxi than I would really like, just to allow people potentially to go through. Not an issue. I've already seen that the road narrows two lanes into one. So I'm knowing already that there's gonna be no one when I get to the pinch point, which is perfect. And you can usually spot people an absolute mile off as well. Okay, what am I thinking now? I'm thinking weather conditions and all that are fine. It's quite bright, that's why I've got the glasses on. Anyone else gonna come out of the petrol station? No, it seems okay as well, so that's all good. Um, the van in front, it's blowing loads of smoke out. Um, I'll tell you what I was thinking about that in a second. There's not enough space to push through there because he did have a slight steer to the left as he came up to do his stop. So I'm not gonna risk that, um, honestly, with the van. He's gonna go shortly anyway, he's gonna go now. So me pushing past there wouldn't have got me anywhere. And the lights up ahead were on red, so sometimes it's not worth it. You're better off just sitting still. But it's not just looking at the van, it's looking at the further distance all the time. All right. So the van blowing smoke out. What was I talking about there? Well, honestly, when cars aren't well maintained, not just cars, vans and lorries as well, when you see smoke billowing out. Um, that problem could have just happened this morning, obviously, but most of the time, it's unlikely. And even if it did just happen this morning, you see a car billowing loads of smoke out. The van wasn't too bad, by the way, but if you do, um, and people are still driving it, you don't really care, all right? So there are certain, Sometimes prejudices, and I'm just being careful of the taxi because he's got reverse lights on. No one was behind, I gave him plenty of space and these lights could change because of the gap in front of me. So I'm just keeping an eye on the silver van to the right and behind, okay. So yeah, there are some prejudices that I often show. And it's not prejudices, it's 
pessimism. And that's a massive difference. When you're in the car, think the worst. If you think the worst, you'll never be caught out and you'll never be surprised. Um, I'm going to take the next road on the left. The van behind's keeping his distance, that's fine. I'm just going to tell him as early as I can, giving him a little bit more time because this road's um, been redesigned. It's a bit sharper than it used to be. It used to be sort of a slip road, so it may very well catch certain people out who haven't seen it. And I'm just going to go on about signals and planning, and that's the key. People often say, I'd put a signal on anyway. If you do that, if you get into a habit, you're then not planning. Each signal should be specifically put on to the situation. And this is again going back to what I was talking about regarding gears. People get used to doing a particular gear for a particular corner, and then they do the same with signals. Um, had comments on this one that you should be signaling right to turn right. No, you shouldn't. The signal right tells those vehicles over there that I'm going to go round in front of them, but a nicely timed signal now helps them. And that's the key, each to its different situation. Okay, the planning here is space. I ain't got much, so checking and I'm slowing. And I'm looking for a gap. If I can arrive at a gap after the second lane of car, brilliant but I can't because there's another white car coming. So I'm driving at a speed where I could stop. Private hire is seeing me and driven well, no problems, but there's no point rushing for the lights because they're gonna change as they did. So notice what I'm trying to do is eliminate threat. I'm eliminating threat by forward planning, assessing it, and then if it's then, threat overall risk is reducing, I'm quickly moving on to the next thing. This guy to my left is my issue now. I'm trying to plan the lights, but it's difficult to see because of the sun. I've seen them change onto red. They're changing. Okay. Now, quickly just have a quick gab about traffic lights. People don't understand that they are censored. They don't have set timings that they stay on green or red for. They're changed to traffic flow. And if you haven't seen my video on traffic light sensors, I'll put a little link to it up in the corner. Um, we'll talk about them in a second. A bit haphazard today, but anyway, we've got a roundabout coming up. This is the one that they've recently changed the instructions to. Um, I still think it's a right turn, if I was honest. Um, it's past the rounded end, but when your examiner gives you um, an instruction to follow that road, you need to work that out and plan yourself. So again, planning fixes that scenario. Okay, all good. Lady's just crossed the road behind the oncoming car. She's gonna be finished, there's no one else. I've got a plan to think about with the cars coming the opposite way in the cycle area. Um, I've held my position, I've checked, there's no cycles there, so I'm totally fine staying in this position. I'm just, again, thinking of other people. I don't want to arrive into this scenario, into the wrong position, and then have to react. And that's where people check, signal, and move all at the same time, and it becomes absolutely lethal. So I'm gonna do a right turn. So I'm thinking when I can get over. I can get over now, there's no oncoming cars. I'm not gonna signal yet because of the side road um, and I'm slow and early because of the van. Nothing moving side to side, so ours are going to change. Slide it into second, little glance around, put my right signal on and I'm now trying to plan the last car again. Always the last vehicle. The road's clear where I'm going already. The last one at the moment is the van. Not going to bother using a handbrake, we're all good. Start to creep and I'm clearing. Plans can change though, um, just because you think that that's going to happen, you've thought maybe all oh, the last car, someone else could zoom around the corner, someone on a motorbike, um, something, something else could go on. So always be ready to change your plan. Okay, we've got a slow lorry and we've got a grey focus to my right that's just catching. So now he's turning, I'm just actually seeing the focus slow so i knew i was fine to go around i had to make sure that i was going to be okay with the back end of the lorry as well so notice how i just backed off until i knew it was clear i'm holding the position near the central line because i know i'm going ahead i am just keep an eye on the the focus there was little planning from the focus and the lorry catching that space so 
honestly, I'm just aware of what's going on to the right hand side. Okay, handbrake neutral. Plenty of clues that we can pick up on on when our lights are going to change. I've done a fair bit of work with Erin with this recently. Um, if you just sit and wait in first gear all the time, you are not planning, you're not forward thinking, you're then reacting. And that then promotes um, a poor driving standard, to be honest. You, you've got to be planning all the time. You should be ahead of the game so nothing's reactive. That's our aim. It's not always possible, but it's our aim. Second lights are changing into first, checking around for anything, and I'm just going to make sure that the traffic to my left is going to go left because it's a bit of a funny junction. And I was also watching the grey focus to my right. Now I've got the white one really close. Yeah, they've dived out. That was zero planning from that lady in the white Hyundai. She arrived at the back of me and then dived out. And it's that lack of planning that we're trying to get away from all the time. And why have I taken my position up near the central line? It's to again, try and inform people as early as I can about the parked cars and I've found a nice little space. We've got a cyclist up ahead. The silver Peugeot to my right is catching. So my plan is to take lane two after the silver Peugeot has gone past because the white one isn't an issue. I'm gonna give the cyclist loads of room. There's no reason not to never a reason to go any closer to cyclists to be honest happy I'm gonna move back planning the roundabout it's got to be clear ahead of me where the white one is as well as to the right and it's not so I'm waiting now it's clear ahead behind the blue one and I'm looking again from my last car and keeping an eye on the cyclist he's decided to push down the side of me so I'm just aware of him I'm just gonna wait for one of my instructors to come past and now I'm going to plan this giveaway as well. When do we see? Which is the last car. It's the black Volkswagen. So already I know. So I'm going to creep and move into the space. And even though the roadworks are there, I'm going to creep up. And it wouldn't have been an issue to wait next to the bus to then filter in because it would have kept the junction clear. However, I've done a left turn. So that's just an important point there, everyone, that People often um, would feel as though that that's not good driving, that they should join that queue as early as they can. Well, all that's then gonna do is back up through the roundabout. So therefore, go into the left lane, as long as I wasn't blocking the slip road to the left, would have been a good option. So, just then, expect people to get a little bit RC over them thinking that you're pushing in though, because that's people's mindset. It's an incorrect mindset, but that's people's mindset, but it's something that we've got to deal with. So, a little bit busy this road. There's a fair few things going on. Not busy in flow of traffic, but busy in hazards. Side roads, crossings, more side roads, parked cars, scaffolding out. I can't see any people working there. Um, there's a van loaded up, so. Um, given that plenty of space, crossings again, fine. So I'm always dealing with things way before I get there. Um, even the car pulling out of the side road, you might not be able to see it that far, but I knew it was there and I knew it was gonna be clear with the gap that was coming the opposite way. So you're never surprised, if possible. Remember, it's not always possible. It might be pretty possible for someone who is highly skilled with planning. Um, this car to the left's fine, not an issue. Um, police drivers, when they've got the emergency blues on or, or ambulance drivers, they have to plan like anything because they're traveling way faster than everyone else. Um, that makes planning unbelievably more difficult. So if you cannot plan at the speed that you're driving, slow it down. People are always in a rush and then I hear comments all the time, I'm a good driver, I can react. What? Now, my plan here, I'm gonna not go into that box even though the lorry is. You shouldn't be going across there and he should hold back because he's gone straight through the right turning box the other way. So I'm just being careful of the lorry now just because of what he did. I'm just being mindful of what kind of driver he is. Bus is parked straight into lane two. The black Nissan didn't really see that very well, did he? 
and he's still unsure whether it's clear to go round the bus even when he got there. Ah, fair, to, fair play to him. He saw the lady. Hold my hands up there. So I couldn't see the lady. Um, he wasn't very well planned originally. However, um, he was showing some good caution with the lady that was stuck behind the bus. And there you go. That proves it that you cannot see everything all the time. White one to the left is all going to be clear. Buses now. Brake lights coming off are usually your first trigger, whether the bus is going to park. Look at the green one. So you got his hazards on? Yes. Honestly, bus drivers, why? There's no reason to do that. No reason whatsoever. Just get into a habit of not parking too close so you can still get out. That then causes problems to all the cars coming down the road. So, rant over, let's get on with the next thing. Okay, road's really clear. Loads of space around me. Driving below the speed limit. It's irrelevant, people think that that's a target all the time, it's not. Try and make progress when you can, but honestly, it's not an issue, not a problem. Nicely in my lane. Um, a few pedestrians up near the bus stop. There's no bus in between us and them. That pedestrian's gonna be clear and to the side. Park van, I'm already checking, positioning out. Don't need a signal, it wasn't gonna affect anyone. Okay, even a signal to come back. Some people think they've got a signal for every steering movement. No, you haven't. I'm just gonna hold my position here because of the gray Mercedes. Now the gray Mercedes is finished, I'm gonna to choose to head back to straddle. The pedestrian's gonna be finished and I'm moving up the road onto my next crossing. That's all fine also, no issues with pedestrians. I could easily stop in the distance to see is clear. So we're all good with that as well. Not a problem. Okay, we're coming up to a, another pretty busy area. Crossing's good. No one around me, quite easy little section, to be honest. Not a problem. Crossing could have changed with that uh, guy going up to press the button. Park one's totally fine. I think they could move off in a sec, so I'm just being ready. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just being ready. Didn't fully commit. See that they just let someone in. Um, it's likely that they're gonna move away. Handbrake's important on a hill. Not gonna roll back. Any little roll then you're um, safe to then any people walking around, which an area like this is important. Lack of planning from the taxi. He's deciding not to go, he's going behind me, that's fine, not a problem. Um, and that's often in people's impatience to try and go quickly that they don't plan. Planning gets you to your journey quicker, rushing doesn't because of a lack of plan. My plan here is to hold the junction clear. No point going in it. Good, could use lane two. Honestly, I'm in no rush, it's not a problem. Crossing could change, loads of people there, button's been pressed, easy enough. Is the silver one gonna blaze through? Nope, they're not, that's good. Okay, so these puffin crossings, you can tell it's a puffin because there's no cowls on the outside. Um, they'll pick up on people when people have reached the other side. So the uh, people have all gone, so the sensors should have picked up on that and changed. There you go. The cyclist who has just been riding on the pavement the other side, um, so expecting him possibly to ride on the pavement a little bit further up. No point rushing. <clears throat> I'm going to turn left just to go down a different road. Yep, cyclist straight through um, the red light. Straight back on the pavement again. Now, I will be doing a cycling video soon. Um, in fact, I've got a couple planned. I've got one of some poor cycling that um, a viewer has actually sent me in of his own cycling. He didn't realized that it was that poor but he's allowed me to use the clip so we've got that one coming up and I'm going to do a cycling video myself where I'm going to get out on my bike um, 
and look at things from the cycling perspective, which is really important. So we will be doing all that soon. I put it in first because there was a gap on the left, so we're gonna probably go within five or someone different was, there you go, it's the oncoming traffic. So when they go on their own, there's usually a filter arrow. So the filter arrow then is determined by the traffic in lane two that's turning, so there you go. You could actually tell when ours were gonna go. I'm checking for cyclists. Looking up into my road, no issues with anything. Can't see behind the bus though, so I've just created a little bit more space and I'm not gonna go fully up to 30 until I can see it's good to do it. It's not gonna get me there any quicker anyway, because we're gonna get up to the next set of lights and probably be stopped. Plenty of shops about cars turning in. Just giving a bit of time to finish. Again, there you go, the lights are on red, so when someone pulls into your path and then you start lambasting them because they've got in your way, honestly, come on, that's not how we should be doing it. Um, planning allows you to get your um, journey done quicker and with less risk and with less stress and with less fuel. So many benefits, it's untrue. Um, I kept up with the flow there, but at a good distance. And keeping up with the flow also keeps you in charge of oncoming traffic who may be crossing your path. So that's another important point. Um, distance, again, I've maximized from the park ones. Um, there's a van up there with lights on. So there's pretty obviously someone in it. I can see the fella in the Illuminous jacket in it already. Um, just literally just creating as little risk as I can by as much space as I can. Again, speed, I'm doing 23 miles an hour. Who would be then feeling rushed by the vehicle behind? You can't, it's only people who follow close actually have very little planning skills. They're the reactive ones, they're the ones who often make risk go higher. So, what you need to do with your drive, and if possible, is plan for those people who do follow close. Um, again, it's that mindset of, I can react. What? What if you can't? What if you get it wrong? You're having an accident. So, I'm gonna do a right turn pretty obviously. Where am I going with the uh, blue one? I'm going near side, because he's taken up a position before the central line. Good, fuse rubbish, lights are changing, I'm creeping, I'm looking for any clue. Fella walking's brilliant, just making sure there was no other cyclists or anything coming through. So that fella walking allowed me to have an idea, not definitively, but it allowed me to have an idea that it was probably gonna be clear. And again, just showing a little bit of patience was key. Noticed how as well, I crept when I thought my gap was on its way, I didn't just react and go. If you creep before your gap, you're able to take the gap more positively and safely when you know it's clear. So try that peeps, try it emerging on roundabouts, try it emerging at junctions. Don't just look and go, because that's when mistakes are made. Um, what I've done, I didn't even talk about it there. Instinctively coming up to sets of traffic lights, I'll back off, I'll create time getting there and see whether we can keep it on the move. It's much safer with people behind, less chance of them going into the back of you. It's kinder on your car, um, it lowers emissions, it lowers your fuel consumption, it's perfect. Okay, here, it's pretty awkward with the crossing. So I'm just actually using the brake downhill couldn't see very well because of how the boxes are situated, whether or not that they've been pressed, so I showed that a little more caution. Next set of lights looking through the trees are on red. Cyclist didn't look, he just came straight out with very little observation this side, and that was quite reactive. Um, cyclists need to maybe slow down a little bit more at some junctions and take some better observations, in my opinion. All right, they, they just seem to dart, and it's uh, then difficult for poor planners to pick up on cyclists, and there's um, some big conflict between cyclists and uh, other road users, and it uh, needs to be addressed, to be honest, and I'm gonna try and help that going forward, because conflict isn't useful um, we need to share the roads everyone does so there are things that I'm gonna try and push across uh, for the cyclists as well um, crossing lady up there no problems behind could stop 
She didn't press the button though. She's just looking for a space, totally fine, so prerogative, but you've always got to be ready and knowing that as a driver. Okay, so we're coming deeper into town. Um, there's enough room for me to go around this, and I'm just going to hold back here just for the bin wagon so that they can get around the Kia as well if they need a bit more space. And then I think we're okay. So here's my creep before I actually go. I've seen the black one turning, so I'm not going to go quickly and adjust how quickly you accelerate to suit what we're doing. I'm turning left. No one behind the problem is the Porsche going to jump out in front of me. Nope. All good. Thinking of the worst all the time. Pretty busy road. Can't see much with the park vans, so I haven't got loads of space with the taxi, so I'm deciding to slow instead. Again, lights are on red. Don't feel pressured by people behind. You manage them, you control them, okay? It's not an issue, it's not a problem. I'm gonna turn right at the lights. Porsche is driving brilliantly and planned. There are times where you can have some fun in cars and I'm not saying that that shouldn't be the case. That should be the case, but at the right times. The audible sound, hopefully you can pick up on it just gone off. So what does that mean? I've said it with Aaron recently, five second trigger. Someone else is going to be going as soon as that audible siren goes off within five. Who is it? Hmm. Is there a reason for that? No, it's us. Sometimes it's not going to be five. Sometimes where there are particularly um, big junctions for pedestrians, it's going to be more than five. That's just sort of like a middle of the road level. So these lights, yeah, they're, they're obviously going to change. Big gap. No one around me. Looking around, scanning for problems. I'm going to turn left as well. Cool. And these pedestrian crossing areas can provide useful tools to know when we're going to change. Um, hopefully you can see the one across to the right that's just changed from a green man now to a red man. So the pedestrians are going to be stopped and then it's going to be someone different. Um, there's no one around me, so I'm actually just going to wait for something else to happen. Yeah, there's no rush to go away. Plan, he moves off. Gap in the traffic from the side, lights at the side are changing, so within five someone else is going to go. Pedestrians to the left I'm looking at now, cyclists, both sides, are they going to look and cross? No they're not, it's all good. I'm creating space for the vehicles coming the other way and I'm going to keep slow. They're giving way, it's not a problem, it's all clear, thank you. Um, but what I was trying to do, I was trying to create enough space for both of them. White one to the right, brake lights are coming off, can't see me very well now so I'm going to hold back. What was her planning like? Now I'm going to hold back because her planning's terrible, so I'm going to give her plenty of space. And they thank me for sorting their planning out. That's okay, I know she's being polite. Fair play to her, show a nice attitude on the road. But honestly, there was no one in front of me, there was no one behind me. If she was really planning, she wouldn't have picked to go around there, knowing the world. So that's poor in my opinion. But we're not going to lambast people. We're not going to turn around and, and criticize. What I'm trying to do that for is to try and give everyone watching this an idea that it is just planning all the time. Lack of traffic coming through side to side. Is it going to be us shortly? No. Is that the five second car? So planning's everything. And that girl in the, uh, the white Volkswagen didn't plan very well. There's another five second gap. There we go. Okay, cyclists, we're all good side to side. We'll check, make sure there's no emergency situations. Pass in front of the cathedral. People to the right, I've had a little look at. People to the left. Not sure what they're demonstrating over. 
turn to it. <clears throat> what we're going to do is a right turn. Tell you what I'll do. I'll do a right turn at the traffic lights a bit further up. This white focus is a little issue for me. Um, fella to the right's fine. Dogs are going to be clear. White focus I've given space to. It's a 20 limit. So we're just trundling down. They didn't look before they walked out and that's dangerous with uh, electric vehicles. I know the electric vehicles nowadays are having some noise to them, but what we need to do with our car is try and plan for the people who don't plan, because we're not all gonna be able to do this. There are gonna be people who will just react and won't learn and think that that's a better way of driving. But it's not, it's a calmer way of driving this that I'm trying to put across today. Because you're never um, reacting to anything. I know my gap's coming after the white car. I know my road's clear before I get there so we can keep flowing. Park vehicles, roadworks, that's all fine. <clears throat> Good, let's have another go at a right turn at the traffic lights a little bit further up as well. Another try. No point legging it to get there. Um, signal wise, again, it's it's planned. My signal has to be on for a length of time to help people around. People think it's distance, it's not. It's when it helps people. I'm gonna let the bus know now. So the bus has got plenty of time, not the ones in front, the ones behind. So anyone now coming up behind, know that if you don't wanna get caught behind me turning right, choose the other lane. So don't think that those signals are just put on at the same time, at the same junctions, day after day after day. They're not. I'm gonna move forward a little bit in case the van behind wants to choose left lane. I don't think he did. It's very difficult to plan here because the road bends round. I'm just gonna make sure that that white one's gonna continue far enough into the junction. It's very difficult to see. There are a couple of vehicles, so I'm not certain. I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna edge. I'm not impeding their view to go round. I'm watching the lights. I'm leaving it in first gear so I'm ready to creep. And remember, creep before my gap. So I need to look at the last car again, glancing at the lights, glancing at my road. That pedestrian could be crossing as well. Last car's the blue one, so I'm gonna creep. Pedestrian's clear, and again, there's no panic. There's no harsh reaction because everything's planned and I knew what was going on. Just seen a pedestrian walk down from a house. Couldn't see whether he was gonna go down the pavement. I can see his head bobbing over the top, so we're good. Just showing a little bit of caution here with the right-hand side queue. Whenever there's a queue to the opposite side, there's always danger there as well. So we're planning crossing. Can't see both sides, there's people on the left. This well could change. Easy could, easy could stop. No pedestrians walking through, that's all fine. Roadworks, there's going to be no issues with any of the guys working, so I think we're all good there. I'm going to turn left at the lights. What do you think is going to happen with these traffic lights with the filter arrow on? When am I going to signal? It doesn't affect anyone in the junction because there's a filter arrow, no one's coming through. Put a signal on as and when I wish. Do you think these are going to change? Am I ready for them? Absolutely am, but we're through. We'll check around the junction for emergency services. No one's overtaking me, dead easy, piece of cake. And again, adjusting acceleration to suit. There's a bus gonna park and the silver Prius gonna come round. Is the lorry. So I've just checked and adjusted position and speed to suit to help. How many people out there would just stay smack bang in the middle of the lane and saying, I've got priority. If you're one of those people, just think about that. Because that's often what I find on a daily basis, the biggest problem with people on the road is that attitude. The lights change again, no one's close behind, so I could stop really heavily if required. Easy, all ready for them, all ready for them, all ready for them. Quick check both ways, we're good. Not a problem. So, um, what was that like? It, Probably, it might have been a little bit haphazard, but driving is like that. I can't tell what's gonna come up. So with planning, you just have to deal with the situation. Um, so really, I know that's a contradiction, 
but I couldn't plan today because it's all about showing planning. I suppose that's not a contradiction. Anyway, I'm talking absolute rubbish, probably as usual. So we're going to call it a day. Um, I hope that's been useful for people. Please try and put in just even just one of those things maybe that you've picked up that you didn't do. Just work on it. It's taken me 20 years as an instructor to tone my habits and my habits always haven't been good. I promise you that. Um, I used to drive like a little bit of an idiot if I was honest and I'm not embarrassed to admit that. But we can all change and we can all do this for the better. So try and change little bits. That's my challenge to you. I'm just watching those people. Notice how my speed slowed even when I was talking another skill maybe we do another video on anyway um, I'm turning into Tesco and I will uh, see you all soon thank you so much for watching take care everyone